Hey everybody, welcome back to my drone zone where you'll never be pressured to subscribe or like the videos. I assume you just clicked on this video because you'd like to see what happened to the Tyro 119. So I hear that the Tyro 119 is a very super popular drone build kit for beginners like me, but I don't know if anybody ever had any negative reviews on it or any issues or problems with it. Maybe I just haven't investigated long enough, but with mine, mine actually caught on fire. So. Stay tuned to see what kind of damage it's done. All right, so I already took apart basically the top plate, my flight controller, everything else, the camera and all that stuff, just to save some time. There was no burns or physical damage to the flight controller or any of the other components that I had, the, the VTX, the video transmitter, things like that. So luckily I was able to blow out the fire or blow out the flame right before more damage could, could happen. If you look right here, one of the standoffs that was there did get a little bit melted. I already took that off, but the flame came from the motor number four, um, section or area of the ESCs underneath. So you can't really see any damage on the top of the ESC, but you will be able to see some damage from underneath. I'll show some other pictures alongside of that later. And one thing I also noticed is that if you look at these motors, you know, most of them spin pretty freely. The one that was affected by the flame doesn't really spin as freely. So I'm not entirely sure if the motor caused the problem or if the ESC caused the problem. But let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. First thing I'm going to need to do is desolder the motors, the motor wires from the ESC. So we'll go ahead and fire up my butane torch here. And I've got a solder sucker. You probably don't need this, but you might need it if you wanna do more as far as getting the solder out of the through hole that we have here. And that's what I have. So I might wanna to try to really clean it up and get as much solder off of those motor wires as I can to solder on the next ESC that I'm gonna to use to replace it. Also, you're gonna need some solder wick to also help absorb some of the solder and get the solder away from there. Um, you know, I mean, you could heat it up really quick, pull the wire through and you're done, but I wanna make it look a little bit cleaner. While this is warming up, I do want to say that I contacted Race Day Quads, which is where I got this, by the way. And I have to say that their customer service is really, really top notch. Um, they might not be so helpful or friendly on the phone because I don't know, every time I call them, my experience is that they just feel uh, very annoyed that you've called them and uh, they don't seem very helpful. They're very short with their answers, explain it. But anyways, if you just go on their website and you go to their uh, link down at the bottom to contact them, they do much better through email. And that's what I've done. And they're really great because I told them about the issue and they basically were, uh, are sending me for free a new stack. It's a, it's a Diatone uh, Mamba stack, it looks like. It hasn't arrived yet. And I'll do that video when it arrives as far as installing it on, but it's uh, they're, they're sending the ESC and the flight controller with it. They said, yeah, it'll be a lot more stable stack than what we have with the Tyro 119. And then I also told them about the motor situation. Uh, there is some like white residue and really, really, really tiny solder balls. And I don't know what that's from, but they suspected that it could be that the motor got so hot that it melted some of the soldering connections on it or something like that. But maybe we can take a look at that later. Um, but they sent a new one as well. So that'll come later. And then we can, um, and they'll send the same exact one, I guess. And then we'll have this all built up again. I really do like this flight controller. So it's gonna be a bummer that I won't use it. I mean, I could use it with the ESC that they're giving me, but might as well just use the stack and uh, we know everything's compatible. It's just gonna require a little bit more soldering. And unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to cut these wires and pull some insulation off and then re-solder to the new flight controller. But that's a whole nother step or another video. So let's see, right now this should be warm enough and uh, we'll go ahead and start taking off some of the, the leads. So we'll just do a few of them here and then I'll cut the video and do the rest off of the video and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like underneath the um, ESC. All right, let's get hot here. So you can see the solder wick starting to suck up some of the solder. Yep, it's sucking up actually. Let me just try the solder sucker. It might speed this up a little bit better because there's a lot of solder to use for uh, a solder braid. The key to this is, is heat it up, heat it up, heat it up, and then uh, 
activate your plunger here and then when you get it close there then the solder is hot enough push the um, release button and it should just suck it right out of there yep see sucked up some of it activate it here yeah, then we'll All right, guys, so that took a little bit of time and it was just going to take too long. So basically what I did was I just hurried up and just removed the wires. Um, it's just going to take a long time to get a lot of heat to suck out the solder from the holes of the pads, which I already did that. So I'll continue that later offline later if I want to uh, use this ESC in another way. So anyways, let's go ahead and try and remove this ESC. I did melt this plastic post a little bit. And we won't have that problem next time because I bought metal standoffs and those are going to be a lot more durable and less risk for melting. I mean, you shouldn't be using your drone anyway as a workbench. Um, oh, yeah, see, I just popped that off of the standoff like that because it was the standoff is basically melted to the uh, ESC from my the heat that I use for soldering um, or desoldering. Sorry. Uh, let's try to get this side off now. It's hung up on motor side number one. Oh, these must all be the standoffs. Yep, because that the standoff here was melted into into the hole. Let's just pop that out of the hole. Yeah, leave it. All right, let's try to get this out by getting the ES the, or the battery cable out first. Okay, we're all going to see the damage done by the ESC together. And actually, I can't even get it out because I forgot I'm going to have to desolder that to pull it through the hole. Okay, so uh, as you can see first, the plastic here where the flame was, was definitely melted on the standoff anyway. So that was going to be, that, that would have had needed, that would have needed to be replaced anyway. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom side of it. So there you have it. This is the cable, just a little bit smoky. It looks like it, that can be cleaned up and reused. All right, so here, let's see, we got a lot of burned MOSFETs. There's one that's completely burnt off, the plastic around it. Um, yeah, here's, here's the cap of the other MOSFET, or the body of it. Um, probably can't see that in the video. Let me just hold it up. There you go. That, that was placed like right there. So that fell off after I was removing the ESC out of the frame and a few other burnt ones. Well, oh, that one came off super easy. So you can see then what that looks like underneath. Pretty good job of just blowing that out so it wouldn't cause too much more damage to the frame because, uh, the damage was just concentrated in this area of the MOSFETs for motor number four. Um, the rest of them are in pretty good shape. Nothing else to damage. Even this plastic uh, connector just got a little bit scorched, but no uh, melting there. So overall, I don't know yet if this was the root cause or not. It, it might have been. I don't know what this here is. That looks like maybe a, a solid ground plane. Like you can see this copper pad and that's underneath this black um, silk screen here on the PCB. Um, so that's the ESC. We'll take a picture of that and put that in the video as well. The next thing I wanna do is show you this motor. It looks like it's going to have to come off anyway. So let's snip off the um, zip ties. And I locked tighted these motors on. So we'll see how hard it is to get off. Maybe I'll have to add heat. Okay, I'm back. You can see I've upgraded my tool set to one of these because uh, these bits seem like they're a lot stronger than the uh, other bits that I had. If you saw the first video of putting the frame together, the, uh, the other bits I had were either the bit was stripping or they were stripping the heads. But these uh, metal, these uh, stainless steel ones seem a little bit stronger and more durable. So it was only this whole pack was only about 10 bucks at Walmart. It comes with a lot of different size screw tips four so i numbered the arms by the way and they they also match my propeller so i always know which propeller goes with which arm at least and it's good to know which motor 
Okay, that comes out. Which motor is which? By the way, finish the thought. Okay, so when I contacted Race Day Quads about this issue and I showed them what I noticed, there's like white residue in there. And I took another sharper picture of it. And I'll take again and put it into uh, the video. White residue on a, on a few of the stators. So these two and these two back here. The rest of them seem pretty, uh, pretty shiny and new like normal. But I don't know. Uh, and if you get a really close look here, like if you had a microscope, you could see really tiny solder balls in there. Um, and let's see, that is tied to this. Let's see, I think it's this wire. And the other one, it's like the two outside wires, the center wire looks like that didn't affect it. I don't know. Uh, it could have been where they somehow were shorted out and short each other out and made it spin like crazy and eventually crashed. I mean, it, I, when you saw the video, it just basically, uh, it was hovering about a foot and I was just trying to do uh, a rotational movement to like to face me. And in doing that, that's when it just went haywire. And you can see the log files, files from the black box as well. I'm gonna go ahead and try and take this um, half moon like lock washer off and see if I can pull this, the uh, stator off the motor. And then we can try and get a closer look maybe. So I work in quality. I'm always looking for root causes, root cause analysis when you see failure so that you can prevent them from happening again. And see, okay, all right. So that's all you need to do, pull that out. It doesn't look like there's any damage inside of here. This, I'm not gonna say you can keep this and reuse it as a, you know, use it as a spare part, but maybe you could if, you know, one of these, if one of these screws threads got damaged or something like that, you could just pop this one in on, on top of that. So that, this probably could be reused again. This one, obviously I'm not gonna trust it. If you can see all those uh, white residue and solder balls. I don't know if you can see it in there anyway. Let's see if I can let it focus. All right, there you go. So I'm trying to focus it on there. I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about. I'll take a better picture later and just put it next to it just so you can see. If you guys have ever seen this before, let me know. Uh, I'm curious to see how this happened or why it happened. Um, I'm new to the, the FPV drone freestyle stuff here. So um, I've never seen that. It is peculiar that it is only on certain staters and not all of them. And just trying to get a closer look. I don't know where any solder would have been so i don't know what race day quads is talking about um that's all one piece so you see the bearings bearings look good i mean even in here i don't see any metal shavings from the bearings i don't see where like shavings would have came off from the stator and housing or the motor bell there so uh so that's the uh situation i've had with the tyro 119 we're gonna cut this video and then when I get the spare part, the stack, the ESC and the flight controller and the spare motor, um, we'll continue the video of installing that. And it's kind of sad because uh, what used to be a one one, Tyro 119 is not necessarily a Tyro 119 anymore because it's gonna have new guts in it. I mean, it'll still have the same GPS video transmitter camera and stuff like that and receiver that I bought, but it won't have the same ESC anymore and the flight controller. Um, Race Day Quads did try and contact the manufacturer for new, new, of the, new components, but they haven't, they've been, they've been really slow of replying. And uh, so it, they just figured it's a lot better if we just get this new stack and it'll be more reliable in the long run. So there it is guys. Um, the next time you'll see me will be when I have the stack and the motor, and we'll put that together. Okay, this um, section of the video is brought to you by Gatorade. <clears throat> I don't really like Gatorade, but thirsty, right? So now the Mamba ESC and flight controller finally arrived from Race Day Quads. They do have really great shipping, and this is really nice and neatly packaged. It comes already, I guess the, the whole stack is screwed together with four screws to the lid here that was just inside of 
this fancy schmancy box. So now that it's arrived, let's go ahead and prepare it to solder onto the, um, the drone frame. And I, as you can see, I already um, replaced the standoffs with metal ones. I don't know why they give you plastic ones. Um, they easily break, it can melt and all kinds of stuff. So I got some, uh, a kit here from Amazon, just some different various um, sizes of standoffs and screws and nuts. Um, yeah, maybe it adds a little bit of weight, which I guess weight is king here for flight, obviously for weight and balance, but I'm sure this drone is powerful enough that it can handle a few metal standoffs. So anyway, uh, I mean, you guys can build how you like. I prefer to have some metal ones here and that's what I'm going to use. So what I need to do first is take this off of the lid. And when you're doing that, you're going to remove those white or clear uh, nuts. You can see the clear nuts on the uh, ends there. Once you take that off, you probably should be able to, can you pull this out? Yep. I'll go ahead and save them there. I do like this nice silicone mat. You got all these different sections of um, spots where you can put screws or any other loose hardware. Right now I've got all my peripherals here because I need to put this all back together since the drone had to be completely taken apart. Or not fully complete, but all of the electronics just to get to the ESC and remove it. It comes with instructions, so that's good. Um, this is the, the ESC is the Mamba F40 underscore BLS version. So they're giving me a comparable ESC to what the Tyro 119 came, went, came in with. Um, we got the output current 40 amps, peak current 50 amps. So it is a little bit better than the uh, stock one. And here you can see the rest of the specs of the ESC. Okay, so the ESC is already connected to the uh, flight controller. We're gonna need to take that apart so that we can solder on the motors and the battery cable. There was nothing wrong with the flight controller that I had. Um, here it is, I already have it <laughs> ready to go. This is the, the existing flight controller that came with the Tyro 119. There's nothing wrong with it. I do like this, I prefer it. I'm gonna miss it because it actually has like a nice uh, SD card slot on it. But I might as well just go ahead and use the full stack as is with the flight controller because uh, then you know everything's going to be perfectly compatible and they're going they're designed to work together, right? So even though I won't have the memory card, at least you know it still has some onboard flash memory that we can use for a black box if we want. Okay, so this is the ESC separated from the flight controller. We'll put the flight controller there on top. Um, this is the bottom side. It's got already some markings here of which pin is which, which that's important. But since I'm going to just go ahead and uh, use the cable that it came with to wire it up, we shouldn't have any problems uh, matching up the connections there. So you got all the good looking MOSFETs and uh, protection here over the components. It looks like it's also a heat sink as well to keep the uh, MOSFETs cooler, which the other ESC didn't have. So that's an improvement there. And um, let's go ahead and solder this up, okay? So here you notice that there is a there are numbers on here. I made this mistake with the other ESC that came with the Tyro 119. I had it uh, upside down instead of right side up but you can always change that in software. But to save yourself some steps later on in Betaflight, you might as well just put it on correctly. Um, so you got motor one, two, three, and four. And so since I was a beginner, obviously I uh, didn't know about this image that's in Betaflight. And this image shows you the motor connections. I think this was in the configurations tab maybe, don't quote me on that, but I'm going to put the ESC on the drone here on the frame according to the numbers on the uh, beta flight motor setup. So we got motor number four, the top corner. What's up guys, it's me coming to you from the future because I need to show you that I already made a mistake of putting the ESC on backwards. I forgot that I had an arrow right here on my drone that I drew on there a long time ago when I first was building this in one of the earlier videos. And I had it oriented like this and I was ready to roll with it because uh, I think because I saw four and I thought, you know, sequentially one, two, three, four, top to bottom, left to right. 
But uh, if I really was following this like I should have been, then I would have noticed that four needs to be up here, one needs to be down the bottom right corner. So you'll see that I already have solder on here because I was about ready to get all the way done until I realized, well, I think I have them in the wrong spot. So, and then real quick before I put these on, I just realized the packaging comes with a bunch of different dampers, gummy dampers here that you can use. And here it says that the blue ones are the softer ones and the violet are the harder ones. So please select the suitable hardness damper to eliminate the vibration. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take those off because I need ones that are like this, not like these big ones. Got all kinds of different ones. So violet ones, we got all four violet ones on here. Then we can go ahead and make sure we put the ESC in the right location. So number four matches my number four on the arm. I did write the numbers on the arms a while ago. Always, because I also number my propellers just to make sure they also go back in the right spots. And we'll go ahead and tighten it down a little bit on the standoffs. And normally I wouldn't be soldering, I guess, on the drone now that I have a nice little board here to hold PCBs. And, um, but I, that means I have to take all the motors off and start all over basically again. Oh, let's see. I mean, you can't go too tight or else you're going to squish your, your uh, spacer right over the top of that um, standoff. I wasn't pushing that hard, so... It would be nice if they looked like this where they were just squeezed a tad, but this one just seems to go right over the top. Okay, that'll hold for now. All right, double confirm. Number four, number four, two, two, one, one, three, motor and arm three. And all right, so that's set, to, set up ready to go. We also have another bag here. Let's dump it all out here so you can see what I got. Okay, some extra screw hardware, probably to mount everything together if you, had, if you were able to do that on your drone and start with a long uh, bolt, but I'm not gonna use these because they're already assembled with the original hardware. Comes with a capacitor, the 470 35 volt, 470 micro uh, farads there. And I already have this from the other one. I might as well I'll probably just use it anyway and keep the new one as a spare part. And the battery connector comes with two wires with the uh, VT, or the um, T60 connector here, which I'm probably not gonna use and use to keep this as a spare part as well because I'll use the other one that I had from the other ESC. And then this wire, I guess they give you an extra spare wire for the flight controller. It is longer in case you need the extra length it looks like. And, um, but yeah, I'll use the short one. I like to keep everything nice and neat looking and um, organize on cable management. So we won't use anything longer than we have to. So anyway, we got that on. I already was basically talking to you how about the solder. We'll show you the next video. That's just how I'm soldering them on. I'll go ahead and finish this up and then we'll come back when I'm done here and show you what they look like. And then we'll get started on the flight controller and taking all these wires off and cutting them off. All right, okay guys, here's what the solder joints look like for three of my motors. I don't have the last one yet because it's still in the mail in transit here on the way and it should arrive I think tomorrow or Wednesday in a couple of days or so. So once that comes, I will go ahead and put that on and solder it together off camera and we'll just keep rolling with the video. But for now, here's the solder joints. I have to solder to the top of the pads or the bottom. I decided to do it to the top. Noticing how short the wires are, maybe it would have been a better idea to go to the bottom, but I think I'm just gonna leave it the way they are. They look pretty strong and sturdy. They aren't nice and clean as much as the uh, they were originally when I had the other the original ESC on it, but uh, these are gonna hold and they're, they're gonna work. There's no solder bridges or anything like that. And I'll go ahead and clean this up with that automotive electronics cleaner and use a plastic brush to clean all that flux out and uh, compressed air and they'll look uh, pretty nice. So right now it's time to go ahead and put on the capacitor. This is the capacitor from the original ESC that I had. And I have a spare part here if we need it. But the way I'm going to do this is I have it so the leads are a little bit spread out and a little bit bent up there like a 90 degrees because they will go into these small holes here and I will solder the leads of the capacitor in these holes of the um, positive and negative planes there or terminals on the PCB. 
The uh, manual shows that you can just solder it straight on like so, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it like that because when I put them through the hole, the bottom of the capacitor will be resting right here conveniently enough on the frame and I can just uh, zip tie that down with a small zip tie. So go ahead and poke that up there like that. You can see here the lead through the hole and that's just kind of gonna hold there pretty good for me. And we'll go ahead and uh, add some solder. This won't take too much because they're nice thin wires. Just need to make sure that we get the solder all around it. Now let's get the other lead up through the hole. There it is. Go ahead and push it up through the top. And yep, that's poking up there just enough to get a good solder joint on it. So that's going to hold good enough until we get the battery terminal wires on there. So that is next. Go ahead and grab it from the previous kit. Here it is. Obviously red positive, black negative. Okay, we're just going to hold this back like that. And uh, before we go do anything else, let's put some more flux on there. And tin the pads. We'll really crank this up basically as high as it'll go just to really get these hot. Okay, so we're gonna, we got our soldering, solder uh, iron really hot because we got a really big ground pad here, or we got really big terminals here that are gonna really soak up a lot of heat. Okay. Okay, so I removed those posts that were on the back here because they were getting in the way of trying to solder this on. All right, let's do the negative terminal. There we go. So I'll make sure I give that battery um, cable some slack. I'll zip tie the cable to these holes here. That should hold in. Okay, so I have a better idea because obviously you can't put anything in through those holes because that's where the posts go. So I'm gonna put one zip tie around and the wires kind of hugging the capacitor. If I had the battery on, it should still fit this no problem. So I'm gonna put a zip tie here and we'll uh, snip that and we'll put a zip tie then between the legs of the capacitor up and around the top or in between the battery wires like this. That'll hold everything all together. So, battery wires still have some slack. And uh, let's just put a dab of super glue on the top so that zip tie doesn't move. Probably a good idea to use hot glue, but I don't have any right now. I'll, I'll be getting some here shortly. Okay, there you have it. The capacitor soldered on and the battery wire next will be to uh, wait on this motor. But since I'm still waiting on it, I'll go ahead and do the flight controller. I'll cut, I'll get all of these wires off because these wires or these cables already go to the things like the VTX and we'll keep the cable, or we'll keep the connector for those peripherals and then snip off the ends and wire them up individually onto the flight controller. Okay, now it's time to wire up the flight controller, but going back to the drone here, I did get the fourth motor in today and I went ahead and soldered that up. As you can see, I cleaned up the solder joints, got rid of all that excessive flux, and they look really good. The way I do that is I'm using this QD electronic cleaner. So it's like a high pressure spray and it's very, um, it cleans and protects sensitive electronic components, so it should be fine for that. And I just use a plastic brush for that and an air compressor to blow out any excessive. This flight control is not gonna be as easy as the original one that came with the Tyro 119. I liked the Tyro, Tyro 119. Everything was super simple and easy to just plug and play. The only thing I wired up was the, uh, the receiver here. And that's just because I wanted a few extra features with the RXSR. So first one here, it looks like we're gonna to have to, let's see, well, let, let's do the camera first. 
the camera also has its own wires that were connected um, already when it was shipped in and it has a red, black, and yellow cable. And unfortunately we're gonna have to cut that off and we're gonna have to cut all of these wires and, um, and then solder them on after we strip some insulation away, unfortunately. So going back to the camera, we have three wires and what's helpful is that the Mamba stack comes with a nice legible um, wiring diagram or pinout diagram. So we're gonna need to follow that. First thing you need to do is get your flight controller ready. I have this PCB magnetic fixture that I got off Amazon for about 16 bucks. It seems pretty nice so far. We'll see if I really like it when I'm soldering. Um, but anyways, it holds the PCB in there pretty good um, when you're soldering. One thing I liked about this is that every pad has holes in them and that'll make it good to um, get a good soldering connection with the wire. I'm gonna treat everything as a, as a through hole. Um, I think a lot of people out there like you guys watching this probably just tin the pad and solder on top. I think that's a weak way to solder. If you got the through hole there, solder it like a through hole. It's a much ro more robust connection there. Going, looking at the uh, pin out here, we have the camera. We have the camera right here and it shows a few more options than what my camera can do. I have three wires, but they show that if you have a uh, couple extra like a transmission and a receiving one. You can also connect those to one of the TX and RX pads on the flight controller. But for me, I'm only concerned about the uh, power five to 36 volt, the ground and the video. And one thing I noticed about this red wire is that it does say five to, six, five to 36 volts and that's getting wired directly into the nine volt. I don't know why it's really going why it's not going to the five volt here, but if I look at the original flight controller that came with the Tyro 119, and the camera was plugged into this slot. This was the motor or the ESC cable. So if I flip it over, here's all the motor ESC um, cabling, and here's where the camera goes. So the, it had five volts, um, a ground cam, and S6. It says that I'm going to be using, I mean, it, it, it says five volts on there, right? So I assume it's going to be five volts to power up the camera. Now I, I want to put it to five volts, but this uh, Mamba stack wiring diagram shows that that nine volt can handle uh, five to 36 volts there. So I'm just going to wire it up according to the Mamba stack. Now let's get to the, um, the cutting of the camera. But first well, I want to make sure I cut the length properly. So if I put the flight controller on here, I will put the uh, arrow facing forward. Every flight controller should have this orientation arrow on it and it's pointing forward. Here's my arrow, here's the front of the drone. And the camera is going to go on these pads right here. And I just wanna see how much slack I would need. I don't wanna make it too long either. And it looks like, you know, maybe if I just cut off about three centimeters to three quarters of, his, three quarters of an inch, it looks like, it should be long enough. So let's go ahead and snip it. I hate to do this, but I got it. Snip it like that, and I'm just gonna place it back into the old flight controller. I won't lose it. So if I ever wanna go back to using this, I at least have some wires that I can solder back onto. So I got the flight controller ready. Now we just need to go here and strip the wires. Should have a um, special wire stripper, but I don't. Let's just use a knife just to gently peel some of that stripping away. And you don't need to peel off a lot. Kind of just like make a cut and I just, I mean, I just kind of just press the knife into the insulation until I hit feel resistance with the wire and I just pluck off the ends there. So there you go. And let's double check that we put everything in the right spot. So the camera, the holes are as follow. We got the VCC here, nine volt, five volt ground camera. So we're gonna start from left to right or um, for me, bottom to top. We'll put the red wire in first. So it's gonna be easy for me to go to work from the bottom side and push the wire through that way. So the pad I need to go through, go to is the second from the hole. So here's the hole, the mounting hole, that's our VCC. The nine volt, the five volt, the ground and camera. All right, we got the wire in there. Let's try and solder it. See if I can heat it up here and then touch it. If I hold it on there long enough, 
the solder should flow all the way to the other side. Just verify that real quick. And it does. So that's pretty good. When I'm done with the bottom side, I'll just touch it up with a little bit of solder on that side and we'll be good to go. So that's the red. Uh, next one, get your black wire, which is the ground. And that's going to skip a spot because that's a five volts. The ground is this hole right here. It's probably gonna be kind of hard for you guys to see on camera, but I'm sure you can find a way that works as well. Heat up the pad, and then we'll draw the solder right in. Okay, and then we've got the ground, which we just did, and now the camera wire, the very last one. That's actually holding us off pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna heat up the pad. All right, we've got the VCC, the nine volt, the five volt, which is empty, the ground, and the camera. So that's the camera, guys. Okay, guys, I have the VTX wire harness cut, and I also already stripped some of the insulation from it. So this is the original VTX that came with the Tyro 119. As you can see on the back side of it, we, we can find out what each of these wires are. You won't get the data cable by default when you get the, the VTX. I had to add that wire myself, and that's for the smart audio so that you can change the frequency with your goggles. So you don't have to use that if you don't want to go and make that because you can push this button if you want. Um, you just have to go look at the instruction manual of this VTX to find out how to use that. Then you have the video, the five volt, two grounds, and seven to 24 volts here. So I matched that up to confirm as well um, with the flight controller. It was plugged into this slot. We've got 10 volts, NC, NC, VTX, and TX3. The 10 volt there is important because if I look here on the pinout, over here is where the VTX is getting installed. You have your nine volts here, ground TX3 and VTX, but then you see that this line right here goes to five volts. So I guess Mamba kind of pushes you to use a Mamba TX400 or the TBIS Unify VTXs. So I don't use any of those and these show that they use five volts and I don't. So I can't wire this up or I don't, I'm not going to wire it up like they showed here. I'm going to actually put my um, power through to the nine volts there then because this says seven to 24 volts, nine volts is within that. And also the old flight controller shows 10 volts here. So I know that this uh, nine volt is going to be in the range. This five volts isn't going to be enough. Okay, so we'll go ahead and wire that up. Let's make sure that we do this correctly. I'm going to use this flight controller as a guide just to make sure I have the wires in the right spot that we do confirm that red means 10 volts. I mean, it's the standard, but you never want to assume. So all right, I'm gonna have this like this. So we'll be soldering to this area here. The nine volt is this first one on the uh, left here. I'm gonna put it in like that and see if bending it with using the hole will help. Okay, there's the red wire. That's our power, seven to 24 volts in the nine volt pad. I'm gonna heat it up. Okay, should do it. That should do it. Okay, the next one, so we just to confirm, you can see the solder coming through the hole. That's perfect. We'll add more later, just to cap it off. Okay, so we've got the red, the red at nine volt. Next is the ground. And it looks like I'm struggling with this PCB magnetic fixture. And you know, I kind of am as a beginner of using this for the first time, but it's actually quite helpful to hold the PCB in place. Here's our ground. The wire is twisted. And the ground is right next to the nine. Okay, there's our ground wire. And the next is the TX3. So if you look here, here's the TX3 and it 
goes to the smart audio that you can see here. This is the signal smart audio. Now, if you didn't add that green wire, you're not going to use that, but I am. So we'll put the green wire here to the TX3. Smart audio, green wire. You can make it any color you want if you made it your own wire. Some people made it white. You can make it orange if you have an orange wire. Then you can match the wiring diagram. There. All right, perfect. We're gonna keep that. That looks good. That's in the hole. We'll add solder on the opposite side. Next is the yellow wire. The yellow wire is easy. It's the VTX right here, which is next to the green wire. Video in, VTX, video transmission. It's gonna transmit to the goggles from the camera. Inputs the camera, then we got the camera sending the signal to the VTX to transmit over the air to the goggles. Okay, flip it over, let's take a look. There you have it, you do see the black wires coming through and the rest of them too, at least the green one is, and the yellow. Let's go ahead and just top it off with some solder. And it should be easier. Let's try to go left to right again here. For you watching, it's probably right to left. Okay, there you have it. Let's see what's the next one we should do. Okay, we're back and I have the wire harness from the GPS cut already and wires stripped. They, that came from this location on the existing or the original flight controller right here. And here you can see you had the red wire in the five volts, black in the uh, negative or ground, and then you have the green wire, which is TX1 or transmit one, and yellow wire for RX1 or receiver one. You're gonna have to pay attention because here on the wiring diagram, their VCC or the uh, the power and the ground are obviously the same colors, black and red. However, they made the receiver wire green here, and you don't wanna make that mistake. So on the flight controller, the receiver wire is actually yellow. So I need to make sure that the yellow wire, receiver wire, goes to the right location, which is on this flight controller, it's going to be T2. And then TX, which is the green wire, and now the orange on the trace, goes to R2. So at least we can see R2 is green. We know we should make sure we put a green there then. That, that's one way to help remember that. Okay, so again, here's the flight controller that we've been soldering on and the GPU or GPS, sorry, GPS will go to this location. Nothing is going to get soldered here. That's open for further uh, things if you want to solder other peripherals on it. We've got here at the bottom, then we got the five volts in the ground. So we'll go ahead and uh, wire those up really quick. Five volts there. And go ahead and solder. Let's double check it on the other side. Yep, we got plenty through there. All right, that's your ground. The next wire is going to be the, or sorry, that was the power. Now the next wire over is the ground, which is going to be this black wire. Now we just need to make sure it gets in the hole here. That'll hold. Time to solder. Now the next wire is going to be the receiver and it is not the green one, it's the yellow one. Receiver, green pad, which is my yellow wire, goes to T2 and T2 is right here, T2. So T2 is going to be looking over, since we're on the opposite or the bottom side of the board, T2 is going to be this pad Don't go anywhere. There we go. Okay, and then the green is our transmission wire, and green goes to R2, which is next to the T2. Let's check the other side. And let's tap it, top it off with solder there for all of those connections. 
All right, that's it for the GPU, GPS. What's next? Let's see, uh, looks like the next part is going to be wiring up the receiver. All right guys, so I just unsolder, unsoldered the wire harness from the old or the original flight controller. So we're ready to now use this to solder on the new one. So this one, I didn't have to cut at all. They actually come like this. This harness comes as is with an extra white wire because what you can use this receiver for is redundancy. And for, so for this other white wire, you can use it as another S bus in from another receiver. I'm not using it. So I wound it up and heat shrunk it together in case I ever do plan to use it in the future. Okay, so here we have our basic ground, which is the black and the red is the five volts. Here we'll also look at the manual from the receiver and then We'll hold the connector like this. So you got your ground, five volts, and then the yellow is your S port and the green is your S bus out. So keep that in mind. Here, you can, it should be pretty easy because they show you the exact receiver that I'm using, the FRSKY, FRSKY R-XSR. And so our ground is going to go there and our five volts is going to go here. Let's go ahead and solder that up. So that is going to, let me make sure I'm oriented as well. As long as the arrow is always going in the right spot, then we'll be soldering correctly. Okay, so using the receiver wire harness, we have the black, which is the negative, that'll go here. The red, which is the five volts, goes here. And next to it is um, the yellow wire, that's our S port. That is not going to go here, but instead it's going to go to where it has the three, which the three shows to shows here, which is S slash F, because you have S or F port, and that goes right here on top. So, okay, so I'm gonna turn it over like I always do. Let's orientate ourselves again. Here's our button, our button here. And then from that side, we've got TX1, RX1, uh, five volts in ground. So we're gonna put our ground here. Nothing is going in these, this group of three, that is for another LED circuit, which I don't have. Okay, black wire here. Okay, the other one I actually accidentally got soldered on, but that should be fine. We should hopefully be able to just to reflow that and pop our red wire into that. So the next one over is our five volts ground, which is this wire right here. I already have solder there. I'm going to try to reflow that and see if I can get this down in there. And I do. Pretty easy there. Okay. All right. So our ground five volts is in. Next is our yellow wire, right? And the yellow wire, like I said, goes to the opposite up into this hole, right? Yellow is S port to double confirm. It's the next wire over, yellow S port, yellow S port. And I have this sticker here in the way. That tells us our target. We're gonna to need to use that later when we update our beta flight software to this flight controller. We got solder there, perfect. Now, next one, last and final is the green wire, which is the um, S bus, which is a very important wire, S bus out. Look here, S bus green goes to RX1. RX1 is right next to our five volts. So we will be putting it into this hole right here. Boom. I always like to heat it up and let that solder flow all the way through the, to the bottom. Let's take a look at the other side. Well, actually, let me show you what they look like up close. I think that looks pretty good. Turn it over. Here are all of our solder, soldering wires. And uh, that looked pretty good. The green had plenty of solder and it went all the way through. I won't even need to touch that one up. Place it back in the fixture here. And then we should pretty much be done soldering actually. Okay, there you have it. There it is. Everything is now wired up. We have no more peripherals left. Next is just to assemble the flight controller on top of this. And then you can check out the rest of my videos to see how I install or finish assembling the rest of this and how 
I do my cable management. Okay, just to double check to make sure your flight controller is on properly. Here you have the arrow, and then I, I put an arrow here to make sure that I always know what the front, where the front of the drone is. I'm gonna pop this camera into its slot. My other videos show you how to install that onto your drone. Okay, so there you have it with that. Let's go ahead and get our standoffs. Now again, I do use the metal standoffs. I mean, uh, for what I'm gonna use the drone for, I'm not like a super, like, like a crazy freestyler or racing kind of guy. So I'm not trying to save every day gone milligram. And uh, whenever I do get into that, then maybe I will make a lighter drone. But right now I'm a beginner and I'm just trying to fly and learn how to control the drone in acro mode. All right, there we go. I did leave the gummies. I, I switched to smaller, thinner profile gummies here. And uh, I don't want to make them super tight either, because if you do, then the gummies don't really get their, um, they lose their shock absorption. Just maybe finger tighten it. There's your standoffs. And then next I have to install the uh, VTX. And we'll put it like this, like I had it on the other drone. Boom. Okay. And then that's the last thing, actually. So then we can just go ahead and use our nuts. These I will tighten down. I mean, I'm not using any shock absorption there. I don't think the VTX really needs it. Um, plus, I don't have any more of those small skinny ones that the uh, flight controller has on it. So... Whatever, we'll just keep it like this. Okay, next is the receiver. And um, what I typically do is just put some double-sided sticky tape on the bottom of the receiver and put it right on top of the VTX and that's in the other video. So I'm finished with this video for today. Uh, I'll go ahead and connect everything like I did before, but go ahead and check out those other videos because basically that's just how you're going to assemble the rest of the drone. And I'll tuck all these wires away just like I normally do for good cable management. So thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, please put them down in the comments. Let me know if, uh, if you want to see anything deeper about the Mamba flight controller or ESC or anything else on the wiring diagram. I'll make a copy of this and put this at the end of the video. And we'll see you next time, okay?